I'm Jason Cole with rcgroups.com and we're taking a look at the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon 3D Printer. Now I know this has been out a while but Bamboo Lab reached out to me and offered to send one for review as well as give one away on our website. Uh, so stay tuned for more information on that. Uh, but I thought, yeah, I've got a six-year-old Anycubic printer and I wanted to see kind of what the latest technology was and how it's improved and progressed. And so I was super excited. I said, send it on, let me check it out. So this video is gonna be more of my uh, first impressions out of the box, first couple of prints. And then we'll talk about some of the uh, things that I wanna do with this printer going forward. And I'll have like a running print log uh, on our website on rcgroups.com where you can kind of keep up and follow along. I'm gonna be working on building some airplanes, radio controlled airplanes from this printer. So that's really exciting. So this thing comes pretty much built already in the box. It's a pretty good size box and you're gonna pull it out, set it on a desk and there's not a whole lot to do to get it ready to start printing. You have to remove some screws, take all of the plastic and wrapping off, take out the AMS system, you know, remove some more screws to unlock the bed. It's a very simple process. You just follow along with the quick start guide that comes with the printer. It's gonna be taped right on top of the, the glass top here. It takes about 10, 15 minutes and you're ready to start printing. So let me tell you, once I got it started printing, it might freak you out a little bit because you're gonna hear some crazy sounds, noises, vibration, resonance checks as it's doing its initial calibration. Uh, there's gonna be some metal clanking around as it kind of wipes the, the nozzle off the back of the printer to clean it. Uh, it's a lot of weird noises that you may not be used to, but don't worry about it, that's all normal. It's part of the process. So once it's finished with its calibration and it's ready to print, there's some preloaded files. You can use the screen and access the internal memory and go ahead and print any number of, of items that are on the list. There's useful things, there's this dinosaur, puzzle, there's the 3D Benchy, which is kind of the first thing you should print. Now, I've printed Benchies before. Again, I've got a six-year-old printer and it prints them fine. Uh, but when this thing printed the 3D Benchy, my mind was literally blown. The, it, the speed was just incredibly fast. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It makes my other printer look like it's just printing in slow motion. It's, it's dramatic difference. And I can't stress that enough, it, it prints fast. So I was really happy with that Benchy and I printed some useful uh, tools, the scraper and a couple of things that you might wanna, wanna use to help you with your process. Um, a lot of first prints are kind of accessories or aids to your printer. Like I, I printed a poop shoot. If you're doing a lot of kind of multi-material printing or multi-color printing, we'll talk more about that later. Uh, it's gonna create some waste and, and that is one of the kind of cons of this printer is if you are doing multicolor prints, uh, you're gonna generate a lot of waste. Sometimes you use more material in purging than you would in the actual item that you're printing. So during the setup, you downloaded the uh, Bamboo Handy app, which is awesome app for mobile devices that you can use it to monitor your prints. You can stop, pause, to actually slice other items that aren't on the internal memory, uh, you're gonna download the Bamboo uh, Studio app on your desktop. And it's really simple if you're used to uh, slicer programs, it's, it's kind of a similar process. The UI is really good, it's, it's fairly easy and intuitive. I didn't have to like go study uh, a manual on how to use this slicer, it kind of, all flows and makes sense, similar to uh, Cura, what I've used before, or, or Prusa Slicer. Um, it's kind of a variant of that, but uh, it's very easy. You know, if there's plenty of good videos out on YouTube if you wanna know really in depth, kind of all the features, what you're gonna be able to do with it. Go check out some of those other videos. I love that I can print straight from my computer. So when I'm slicing a file, look at it, and I can send it right to the printer, tell it what color filament I wanna use, uh, if you're doing multicolor prints, uh, you can use the app to paint, color, change, you know, make sure whatever color you need to be for a specific part of an item is that color and just send it directly. You don't have to pop an SD card out, stick it in your computer, load it, bring it back, plug it in, tap, tap, tap. Uh, it's just a much easier, simpler process. 
a lot of things about this printer make it a lot more convenient, easy to use, and more fun. Now I've had this a few weeks and I've been printing uh, basically 24 seven nonstop, just printing all kinds of stuff, tools, uh, figures, this little uh, multicolor turtle turned out really nice. So that is one of the standout features for me is this AMS system. It's an accessory, it's optional, you don't have to get it, but the X1 Carbon Combo does come with it. And it allows you to place four different spools of filament inside. It's got some desiccant holders in the bottom to help keep the humidity low. It's got a humidity sensor, so it can kind of tell you the status, red, orange, green, if, if it's too wet inside, which could cause problems with your filament. And it's kind of an automatic system and it kind of feeds filament into the printer, rolls it back up and can switch and it does it automatically. It's not completely idiot proof. It's, there, there are some things you're gonna have to learn and, and do and understand about printers and, and how all things work and why they work but it's very close to just being set it and forget it. Now I have had some, uh, some things happen that were kind of weird. Uh, it's got a LiDAR system built in, so it can kind of calibrate, inspect the, the filament as it's coming out, and it does a first layer inspection. So it makes it sure that, hey, this thing's not lifting, it's actually sticking to the bed, the first layer looks good. And if there's a problem, it's gonna let you know before it keeps printing just something that's not gonna work. But I have had that first layer defect come up quite a bit when there was no actual problem with the first layer. It printed, looked really good, you come up and visually look at it, there's no problems. It tells you there's a problem and you have to, you know, say either resume, cancel, whatever. So just hit resume and then it does the print and it turns out beautiful. The other thing which I touched on briefly earlier was it, this does create a lot of waste um, out of the back. Now you can adjust that a little bit using the purge or the flush volumes uh, in the software that's a little bit more advanced and you run the risk of having some color bleed if you reduce it too much or not quite working out right. The default settings it, it creates a lot of waste um, so it's something you're going to need to be aware of and prepared for uh, I've seen a lot of uh, waste bins that you can print that's like a container you, you stick up against the back of the printer and it you know catches all the waste so you can take it and dump it in the trash can later. Um, if you're doing a really big multicolor print with a lot of color changes there's going to be a lot of waste and those can fill up real quickly and then clog the exit hole and can create some issues It can get stuck to the nozzle and then knock your print off. You want to make sure that you have a, the ability to take all that waste and remove it, um, create a poop chute like I did, or dumps it into a, a larger trash can where that's not going to get filled up. Uh, so just something to be aware of. And uh, the other kind of thing that you got to worry about is in, in the AMS system itself, um, it's a little finicky on the types of spools that it can use. If you're using non-bamboo lab filament, cardboard spools especially I've heard are problematic. I've not tried any, um, but I did have some problems with some of my other plastic spools. The bamboo lab spools work perfectly. I haven't had any single issues with those. And they do sell uh, spools that you can uh, buy and they, they kind of twist apart and you can load uh, a third party filament roll onto it and then stick that in the AMS and that works really good. There's also one of the pre-built files in the printer itself is a 3D printed spool that you can print and that should work just fine in the AMS system as well. So after three weeks of using the X1 Carbon, I'm extremely impressed with this thing. It, I think it's worth every penny that it costs. The, the quality of the hardware, it's extremely well built, well engineered. The quality of the, the software integration with it. Uh, everything just works the way it's supposed to. So this thing is the next level of 3D printing technology, especially coming from where I, you know, I have from a six year old printer. Speed, quality, just ease of use, convenience features. This thing's incredible, so really excited about it. Uh, what I wanna do with this going forward is, obviously this is a radio controlled hobby website, rcgroups.com, and so I'm gonna be working on creating and building uh, some RC airplanes, uh, some sailplanes. I wanna take out, do some slope flying. It's gonna be a journey, and I'm gonna keep updating 
uh, the forum thread for this review uh, with my progress and, and see how the planes turn out. Be sure to click that link down in the description and follow along and see my progress on building some airplanes and uh, also find out how you can get in on the giveaway. All that information will be over there on rcgroups.com. Well, that's it for now, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions for me about this printer, leave those down in the comments below. And until next time, I'm going to go get this thing printing again.